For 50 years, the majority of T.S. Eliot's prose writing has been uncollected and inaccessible. Restricted from public view, while his widow Valerie made good on her promise to bring all of his work together for eventual publication. On his deathbed, T.S. Eliot told Valerie, his second wife, that he did not want to commission a biography of his life. He did not want editions of his letters, critical editions of his works, that everything he had published in collected form was all he wanted to preserve. And she told uh, him in reply, Tom, she always called him Tom, don't place this burden of exclusion on me. The world will be interested in your life and in your letters and in your uncollected works. And I must be able to respond. And he said, all right then, that if, if they're to be done, then you must do it. And so she began what was to her a great privilege, joyfully using her life to recreate the scattered substance of his. A devoted steward of her husband's work and legacy, Mrs. Eliot dedicated the rest of her life to creating a complete archive of Eliot's poetry, plays, prose, and letters. And she began that process, and in it, she began to do the work that she thought needed to be done. She published The Wasteland in its facsimile edition that had been aided by the assistance of Ezra Pound. She published his first volume of letters. She hoped that she would be able to do it all the work herself. Eliot chose to publish in collected form fewer than 100 prose works in his lifetime. Over nearly five decades, Valerie painstakingly compiled, preserved, and transcribed over 800 additional pieces, including essays, reviews, lectures, and commentaries. Finally, with her health failing, she had done all she could. But in 2004, I went to have tea with her and asked to see a file on uh, T.S. Eliot and Ted Hughes about whom I was writing. And she brought out the file and there wasn't much in it, but there was a wonderful letter from Ted Hughes to her on the publication of the first volume of letters that she brought out. And he praised her edition and told him how much those letters meant to him as a poet. And then said at the end, now Valerie, now that you've let us have the letters, won't you please let us have the prose? All of that material, that early material is so interesting. And I leaned over to her and I said, do you remember this letter from Ted and his requesting you'd let us have the prose? And I didn't expect anything but a smile. Uh, I expected no comment. And she read the last line of the letter and she said, yes, it's time. I, I need your help. Professor Ronald Schuhard retired from Emory University to help Mrs. Elliott and to serve as general editor of the prose writings. He recruited seven leading Elliott scholars to assemble edit, annotate, and cross-reference each piece in eight volumes. Their work will culminate in the publication in digital form on Project Muse, eight volumes that gather for the first time in one place the collected, uncollected, and unpublished prose of one of the most prolific writers of the 20th century. All of that material is now available for scholars to use and, and um, it's all chronologically arranged so that uh, from the very beginning in 1905 to his death in 1965, you can follow the intellectual development uh, of Eliot in his poetry and in his prose and his drama um, through, his, uh, um, through its relation to his prose writings. Eight volumes um, that will eventually be on a digital platform, fully searchable, um, fully indexed. 
and I think that it will be a new day in, um, in Elliot and modern studies.